everyone. So now we go to Title IX or Crimes Against Personal Liberty and Security, still in the Revised Penal Code Book 2. This will cover Articles 267 to Article 292. So Chapter 1, Crimes Against Personal Liberty, Section 1, Illegal Detention. So the first article is Article 267, Kidnapping and Serious Illegal Detention. So, kidnapping in serious illegal detention is committed when a private individual kidnaps or detains another or in any other manner deprive him of his liberty when such detention is illegal and it is committed in any of the following circumstances. So, if the kidnapping or detention should have lasted for more than three days, if it is committed simulating a public authority by pretending to be a police officer or pretending to be NBI agents, Number three, if threats to kill have been made upon the person kidnapped or any serious physical injuries are inflicted on the kidnapped person. And if the person kidnapped or detained is a minor, female, or public officer. So these are the elements in the slide. That the offender is a private individual, he kidnaps or detains another or in any other manner deprives the latter of his liberty. And those I just mentioned. So if any of the circumstances are present, then we have serious illegal detention. The, penalty, the presence of any of these circumstances will meet the crime of serious illegal detention and the absence of any of the circumstance will make the crime under slight illegal, slight illegal detention under Article 268 or the next article. So who is the offender in Article 267? He must be a private individual as stated in the first element because um, if he is a public officer who has been vested by law to make an arrest and he detains a person and he de to make an arrest and he detains a person it will be arbitrary detention under, under article 124 so can a public officer still commit kidnapping and serious illegal detention of course the, that public officer um, if it, he has not been vested by law with the authority to effect arrest and to, what they, and to detain a person, then the said public officer is acting in his private capacity and is therefore answerable under Article 267. So although a public officer, since he is acting in his private capacity, the crime committed is kidnapping and serious illegal detention and not arbitrary detention under Article 124. So circumstances which will qualify the penalty is one, if the purpose of the kidnapping is to extort, uh, is to extort ransom from the victim or from any other person. So kidnapping and serious illegal detention for ransom. So first, what is ransom? A ransom is the money, price, or any other consideration given or demanded for the redemption of the liberty of the person who has been detained or kidnapped. When the victim is killed or dies as a consequence of the kidnapping or detention, so this is kidnapping and serious uh, and serious illegal detention with homicide. So this is another incident that qualifies um, the penalty of Article 267. So this is a special complex crime. Therefore, since it is a special complex crime, regardless of the number of victims um, killed, it is still kidnapping and serious illegal detention with homicide. So you have to note that it is required that the victim himself is the one who has been killed. If it is another person outside of um, the victim, uh, it will result in the separate and distinct crime because the law is particular that the person detained or kidnapped must be the one who is killed or died as a consequence in order to fall under serious illegal detention with homicide. So another circumstance is when the victim is raped so this is ser kidnapping and serious illegal detention with rape. So it is necessary that the victim is the one who has been raped. Again, since this is a special complex crime, regardless of how of the times that the victim has been raped, or regardless of how many victims were raped, the crime committed is only kidnapping and serious illegal detention with rape. There is no kidnapping and serious illegal detention with multiple rape. So another is when the victim is subjected to torture or any dehumanizing acts. So the presence of any of these circumstances I just mentioned will bring about the imposition of the maximum penalty or of death or the capital punishment. So we go now to a situation. 
So what if A is indebted for 2 million pesos to B? So B was asking payment, sinisingil na niya si A. But A could not pay and says he has no money. So then B kidnap you and detain C, the minor child of A. Let's say C is only um, 10 years old. B then called A saying that papakawalan niya lang si C the moment that A pays his indebtedness. So what crime is committed here? It is kidnapping and serious illegal detention for ransom since humingi ng kahit na yung hinihinging ransom ni B is yung indebted, indebtedness ni A, it is still kidnapping and illegal serious illegal detention for ransom. So it says here, even if the amount being asked by the kidnapper is the indebtedness of the father of the kidnapped child, any amount demanded in exchange for the liberty of the person detained that is already considered ransom and therefore falls under serious illegal detention um, for ransom or kidnapping for ransom. So another is, what if A saw his enemy walking? See B. He then abducted B and placed him inside the van. The following morning, people found B's body in a vacant lot with gunshot wounds and a severed head. So what crime is committed? So dito daw, yung crime is murder. There was no intent to detain the offended party. It wasn't proven that A detained um, B. So the intent was to kill B. Therefore, the crime committed is murder and not kidnapping and serious illegal detention with homicide. Okay, so we go now to the next article. So Article 268 is slight illegal detention. So the penalty here is reclusion temporal. So what are the elements of slight illegal detention? So slight illegal detention is committed by any person who shall kidnap um, or detains another in any other manner or in any other manner, deprive him, deprive him of his liberty when the said detention is illegal, absent of any of the circumstances enumerated in Article 267. So magiging slight illegal detention lang siya. So yung um, elements here is offender is a, still a private person, he kidnaps or detains another, then uh, and deprives him of her liberty, furnished place for the perpetuation of the crime, that the act of detention or, or kidnapping must be illegal, and that the crime is committed without the attendant of any of the circumstances enumerated in Article 267. So, um, if less than three days lang siya, if hindi naman against a woman, uh, a minor, or a public authority, if hindi naman siya nag, um, na, kumwari, na police officer, or hindi naman siya nag-threat, or nag-inflict na serious physical injury. So, it might be slight illegal detention. So, kailan na mimitigate to? So, privilege mitigating circumstance if the following requisites confer. So, first, it is necessary that the release has been made within three days. So, kailangan napakawalan niyo within three days from the commencement of the said kidnapping. Pangalawa, um, it must have been made without the offender having attained or accomplished his purpose. So, kailangan hindi niya pala accomplish yung purpose niya. And third, it must have been made before the institution of the criminal proceedings against the said offender. If all of these three are present, then such voluntary release of the offender will mitigate the criminal liability of the said offender. So, kailangan dito, um, para ma-mitigate, pinakawalan niya dapat yung kinidnap niya. So, to give you an example, so, eto. what if A held a grudge on his friend B? So, to teach B a lesson, he kidnapped and detained B and placed him in an empty container. Yung mga container na nakikita natin sa pier, like the big containers, uh, near the port area. However, a while later, A felt guilty and released B the same night. So nung gabi, nirelease din niya. So what crime is committed by A? The crime is slight illegal detention under Article 268. If the offended party has been released, such release must be considered as a privileged mitigating circumstance because from the penalty of reclusion temporal, the penalty would be lower by one degree. That is prison mayor. So another is what if it was C, B's daughter, who is a minor, who is kidnapped, so yun yung nilagay sa container, and detained in the morning. However, in the, in the evening, A immediately released C because he felt bad for the child. Will such um, release mitigate his criminal liability? Mam mitigate din ba? So no, because here, the fact that the person kidnapped, si C, is a minor, 
the crime would immediately fall under Article 267 or serious illegal detention. And if the if the crime is committed under Article 267, no amount of voluntary release will mitigate the criminal liability of the offender. So if the victim is a minor, like I said, a police officer or a public officer or a female, automatically it will be kidnapping and serious illegal detention. And no amount of voluntary release will mitigate the offender's criminal liability. So we go now to the next article, Article 269 is unlawful arrest. So unlawful arrest, the penalty of arrest to mayor and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, in any case other than those authorized by law or without reasonable ground, therefore, shall arrest or detain another for the purpose of delivering him to the proper authorities. So unlawful arrest is committed by any person who shall arrest or detain another without authority or law, without reasonable ground, therefore, and his main purpose is to deliver him to the proper authorities. So the purpose is para i-deliver siya sa mga authority. And the elements of this crime is that the offender arrest already takes another person. The purpose of the offender is to deliver him as proper authorities. And the arrest is not authorized by law. So wala siyang, um, he is not vested the right to arrest that kind of person. So yung offender dito is hindi lang to limited to a public officer, but also a private individual. So this refers to warrantless arrests. In Article 125, the detention is for some legal ground, while here, the detention is not authorized by law. In Article 125, the crime, yung Article 125 kasi, it's delay in the delivery of detained persons to the proper judicial authority. So we have to differentiate that from this. In Article 125, the crime pertains to failure to deliver the persons to the proper judicial authority within the prescribed period, while here, the arrest the arrest itself is not authorized by law. So we go now to section 2, kidnapping of minors. So article 267 is kidnapping and failure to return a minor. So the penalty of reclusion, the reclusion perpetua shall be imposed upon any person who, being entrusted with the custody of a minor person, shall deliberately fail to restore the latter to his parents or guardians. Kidnapping and failure to return a minor is committed by any person who um, had been trusted with the custody of a minor who shall deliberately fail to restore the said minor to his parents or guardians. So ito yung elements niya, that the offender is entrusted with the custody of a minor person, whether over or under 7, but less than 18 years, of, years old, because minority is those under 18 years, that he deliberately fails to restore the said minor to his parents. So who is the offender here? The offender is yung person na pinagkatiwalaan. The offender, the offender is the person entrusted with the custody of the minor. So, kailang mag arise yung crime? The crime will arise when the offend, if the offender shall deliberately fail to restore the said minor to his parents or guardians. So, I'll give you a situation to better explain this. What if X saw A and B with their baby C? So, C, family C, A, B, and C. Who was inside the stroller and the family was resting in the Leta Park. While A was buying drinks and B was in a call, X surreptitiously got C from the stroller and drove away to Baguio. So is the crime kidnapping and failure to return a minor? So here, the answer is no. The crime is kidnapping and serious legal detention. Note that in order for the crime to fall under Article 270, the perpetrator has to be entrusted with the custody of the minor, which he fails to return. Here, X took the baby without the knowledge of the parents. So, kidnapping yan. Pero kung wari, let's say, um, si A, pinagkatiwala niya yung baby kay, um, pinahawak niya yung baby kay X, and magkakilala sila, and talagang nagbinabantayan niya yung baby. So, if hindi niya na-isoli yung bata, yan yun, it will fall under Article 27. So now we go to Article 271, induce, inducing a minor to abandon his home. So the penalty of prison correctional and a fine not exceeding 700 pesos shall be imposed upon anyone who shall induce a minor to, to abandon the home of his parent or guardians or the person entrusted with his custody. If the person committing any of the crimes covered by the two preceding articles shall be the father or the mother of the minor, the penalty shall be arrest the mayor or a fine not exceeding 300 pesos for both. 
So what are the elements of this crime? So the elements are that the minor, whether or whether over or under seven, is um is living in the home of his parents or guardians or the persons with his custody. So that the second one is that the offender uh, induces a minor to, ab to abandon such home. So dito, it is committed by any person who induces a minor to leave the home of his parents or yung ano, guardian niya. So the crime will arise even if the child hasn't left if, even if the child hasn't left the house of the parents or guardians, so mere inducement lang with the, in, with the intent to cause damage will suffice. Under Article 271, it is provided that um, Article 270 and 271 can also be committed not just by strangers, but also by the father or the mother. For example, uh, legally separated yung parents and the yung, yung mother yung entrusted with the child yung custody nasa mom so whenever the child visit, visit visits the dad so pag iniinduce niya yung child na wag na umuwi ganyan so it might fall under this if the offender is, is any other person the penalty is reclusion perpetua but if the offender is the father or the mother note that the penalty is so low only arrest to mayor so depending din siya sa discretion ng court but pwede pa rin silang maging, maging liable. The only difference is their respective penalty. So next one. Section 3 is slavery and servitude. Article 272 is slavery. So ito yung elements ng slavery. So the offender purchases, sells, kidnaps, or detains a human being. The purpose of the offender is to enslave such human being. So it is committed by any person who shall buy, sell, kidnap, or detain another person for the purpose of enslaving that person. So if the, pers the purpose is to engage in immoral traffic, so the penalty will be qualified. Usually naman, wala nang slavery sa panahon ngayon. Like, bihirang, bihirang, bihirang. But, of course, um, this article might still apply if there is a case of slavery that can happen within our jurisdiction. So next is Article 273, so exploitation of child labor. And the elements here is that the offender retains a minor in his service. It is against the will of the minor. And it is under the pretext of reimbursing himself of a debt incurred by an ascendant, guardian, or person entrusted with the custody of the minor. So ito, kinokommit to na any person who shall detain a child in his service against the will of the child. Under the pretext of reimbursing a debt, yung pag may utang yung magulang, tapos papagkabahuhin yung bata para kung wari mabayaran hanggang mabayaran yung utang. So, that's also unlawful. And it is punishable under this article. Next is Article 274, or seven, services rendered under compulsion in payment of debt. So, the penalty here is arresto mayor to Christian correctional. And the elements of the crime includes Offender compels a debtor to work for him either as a household servant or farm laborer. Second, it, it, it is against the debtor's will. And third, the purpose is to require or enforce the payment of a debt. So it is committed by a, a creditor to um, who shall compel a debtor to work for him as a household servant or as a farm laborer against the will of the said debtor in order to require and force the payment of the debt. So kung kanina, yung magulang yung may utang, tapos yung pinabayad is yung labor ng anak, here naman, uh, ikaw mismo yung may utang, tapos in um, in exchange of that, parang ina, 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 inaano ka ng creditor mo na pinipilit ka or kinumpel ka mag-work in order to pay for your debt. So that is also unlawful and is punishable under Article so we go now to chapter two, crimes against security, and section one is abandonment of helpless persons and exploitation of minors. So article 275 is abandonment of person in danger and abandonment of one's own victim. So the penalty here is arresto mayor. So what are the um, what are the acts punished here? So first is by failing to render assistance to any person whom the offender found in an inhabited place, wounded or in danger of dying when he can render such assistance without detriment to himself, unless such omission shall constitute a more serious offense. Another is failing to render help or assistance to another 
whom the offender has accidentally wounded or injured. So, siya yung nakasugat. Third, failing to deliver a child under seven years of age whom the offender has found abandoned to the authorities or to his family or failing to take him to a safe place. So, I'll give you an example. What if X went hunting in a forest? when he suddenly saw Y in the middle of the forest with a fatal wound on his neck and was begging for help. So X did not help and left the forest. A while later, Y was found and rescued. Can he file a case in violation of Article 275 against X? So yung forest, is it considered an inhab uninhabited place? So usually forests naman, it is actually considered an inhabited place kasi wala usually tao dun, like more like insects and animals lang. So the answer here is yes, because B, because Y, sorry, because Y was found by X in an inhabited place, and he was fatally wounded and in danger of dying, and there being no detriment on the part of X to render assistance, but he failed to do so, and therefore X may be held liable. So wala namang, um, hindi naman detrimental kay X na tulungan si Y. So he may be liable under Article 275. So another is, what if A saw B at Intramuros? Pero wait, I'll just go back. Pero kung wari, um, for example, in that forest, may snake. Nandun si, um, andun si X. Tapos, wounded, uh, andun, sorry, andun si Y. Wounded si Y. Um, tapos, may ahas. And kung lalapit si X, uh, makakagit siya ng ahas. So is he still liable under, under Article 275 pag di niya tinulungan si Y? No na. Kasi it, there, is, um, there is detriment on him. He might get hurt or he might get injured if he helps, uh, no, if he helps why? Because we remember in our laws that self-preservation is actually the most, um, it justifies the actions of people into not helping, um, into not giving assistance. And so in this case, since self-preservation is more important for X, so, kahit hindi niya tulungan si Y, hindi siya liable under Articles 275. Pero kawawa naman si Y, no? Anyway, what if A saw B at Intramuros? B was wounded as he crashed his motorcycle in a post. However, A, instead of helping B, left. Is A liable under Article 275? Wait, mali ata yung salag ko dito. I uh, no because the place is not an inhabited place. Sorry, pagkakaintindi ko. Intramuros is a public place. An inhabited place is one wherein there is a remote possibility for the victim to receive some help. Therefore, A is not liable under Article 275 despite the fact that B is wounded and dying. So here, kung are, pag si A yung nakabanga kay pag si A yung nakabanga kay pag si A yung nakabanga kay ano B Siyempre, liable. Siya, kaya may na-liability yun. Tapos, inabandon niya ba? Pero, eto, in this example, um, it was, it was B who crashed himself. Uh, he crashed himself. And, intramuros naman, if you shout there, tulong, tulong, a lot of people will help you. Although, kahit walang tao, it, it is not considered an inhabited place. And so, A will not be held liable. So we have to remember, we have to, um, we have to identify kung yung lugar ba na yun is an inhabited place. So next is Article 276, Abandoning a Minor. So the penalty of arrest to mayor and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos shall be imposed upon anyone who shall abandon a child under seven years of age, the custody of which is incumbent upon him. So what are the elements of this crime? So the offender has the custody of the child the child is under seven years of age, he abandons such child. He has no intent to kill the child when the latter is abandoned. Abandoning a minor is committed by any person who has been entrusted with the custody of a child under seven years of age, and he abandons the child, the said child permanently, deliberately, and consciously with no intent to kill the said child. The penalty will be qualified if death resulted from the abandonment or when the safety of the child has been placed in danger. So next is Article 277, or abandonment of a minor by a person entrusted with his custody, or this is the indifference of parents. Sorry, may ano dyan. Oh, typo. Indifference, indifference of parents. So what are the acts punished here? So the acts punished here is yung abandonment of a child by a person entrusted with his custody. So 
it is committed by any person who having entrusted with the living and education of the minor shall deliver a minor to a public institution or other persons without the consent of the person who entrusted such minor to the care of the offender or in his absence without the consent of the proper authorities. So pag pinagkatiwala mo sa iba, yung pinagkatiwala sa iyo, you're liable on the deal. Indifference of parents is committed by any parent who neglects any of his children by not giving them the education which their station in life requires and financial capability needs. Permits. So next is sorry. So next is exploitation of a child under Article Two Seven Eight. So what are the acts punished here? By causing any boy or girl under sixteen sixteen to engage in any dangerous feat of balancing physical strength or contortion, the offender being any person. So employing children under 16 years of age who are not the children or descendants of the offender in exhibitions of acrobat, gymnast, rope walker, diver, or wild animal tamer, the offender being an acrobat, etc., or circus manager, or person engaged in any of the said callings. So employing any descendants under 12 years of age in dangerous exhibitions enumerated on the next preceding paragraph, the offender being engaged in any of the said callings. So there's also delivering a child under 16 years of age gratuitously to any person uh, if any of the callings enumerated in paragraph 2 or to any habitual vagrant or beggar, the offender being an ascendant, guardian, teacher, or a person entrusted in any capacity with the care of the child. And lastly, by in including any child under 16 years of age to abandon the home of his ascendants, guardians, creators, or teachers to follow any person entrusted in any of the callings mentioned in Paragraph 2, or to accompany any habitual vagrant burger, or burger, or beggar, the offender, being any person. So these acts are considered as exploitation of minors because these acts endanger the life and the safety and the growth and development of the minor. So ito yung mga nag involved ng circus, mga, um, mga shows. So if the delivery of the said chat is on the basis of a consideration, compensation or money, makakwalify yung, ano, yung penalty. So, mere act of delivering the child gratuitously under 16 years of age, the crime is already committed. The fact that it is with consideration, the penalty is qualified. So, kung may bayad, makakwalify yung penalty. So, Article 279, the alam ko is additional penalties for other offenses. So, the, the imposition of the penalties prescribed in the preceding article shall not prevent the imposition upon the same person of the penalty provided for any other felonies defined and punished by this code. So we go now to section two, trespass to dwelling. So um, here is articles 280 and article 281. We have qualified trespass to dwelling in other forms of trespass. So the penalty here is arrest mayor and arrest minor respectively. So what are the elements of qualified trespass to dwelling? So it is committed by a private individual who shall enter the dwelling of another against the will of the latter. So the elements are offender is a private individual. It is committed by a private individual because if, a pub, if it is a public officer, then the crime is under Article 128, which is violation of the domicile. So he enters the dwelling of another. Such entrance is um, against the will of the latter as discussed in Article 128, when the law says against the will, there must be a prohibition or opposition from entering, whether express or implied. Merong do not enter or nakalock yung pinto. Yan yung mga usually um, express or implied saying that preventing people from entering. Mere entry without consent will not bring about qualified trespass to dwelling. So if the door is open, therefore, it means that anyone could enter without um, the consent of the owner. And the moment that he enters, he is not liable for qualified trespass to dwelling because there is no pre prohibition or opposition from entering. So remember to keep your doors locked. It is necessary that there is an opposition or pro prohibition from entering. Kailangan talaga may nakasabi nga, do not enter or um, nakalock na yung door. And the, so, or... Kumare may kumatok and the owner got up, opened the door, but upon seeing the person, sinara niya ulit yung pinto. Implied prohibition din yon. So we go now to the next one. Oh, sorry. Balik tayo. Oh, eto pa pala. 
So, elements naman ng Article 281, other forms of trespass to dwelling. So, this is actually trespass to property. So, the element here is that the offender enters the closed premises uh, or the fenced estate of another. So, the entrance is made um, while none of them, uh, none of, while none of them or no one is inhabiting the place. So the third one is prohibition to enter is manifest. Then fourth one is that the trespasser has not secured permission of the owner or the caretaker of the said property. So trespass to property is committed by any person who enters a closed premises or fenced estate, which at that time is uninhabited and the prohibition to enter is manifest and the offender enters the said uninhabited place without securing the permission of the owner or the caretaker thereof. So to give you an example, and ma differentiate natin silang both. So, so what if there was an apartment in Makati? It was uninhabited and had the sign for rent or for lease posted at the gate. So si A, he entered the said apartment. Ano yung crime na nakomit ni A? So it is trespass to property because it is a closed premises which is uninhabited at the time of the entering and he entered without first securing the permission of the owner or the caretaker. So another example is what if there is this townhouse which is occupied by a family who all went to, to the US for a month. So for a month, walang nakatira dun sa bahay. So si X, alam niya tong information na to, siguro he was, she was uh, dating bed or um, kapit bahay or someone they know. So, he entered the said townhouse. Ano yung crime na nakomit ni X? So, the crime here is com committed is trespass to dwelling. The townhouse is a residential place and although no one is occupying it at the moment, it is still considered as an inhabited place. Therefore, the moment anyone enters, the crime committed is trespass to dwelling and not trespass to property. Okay. So, next is Section 3, Threats and Coercion. So, Articles 282 to 285, uh, this is grave threats, light threats, bond for good behavior, and other light threats. So, lahat yan, the discuss natin is isa. So, what is the difference between grave, grave threats, light threats, and other, <laughs> other light threats? So, in grave, grave threats, the threat will always and always um, amount or constitute a crime. It may or may not subject to a demand, money, or condition. So, ano ba yung mga magkoconstitute ng crime? Di ba threat? Parang pananakot, ganyan. So, ano ba yung magkoconstitute? Papatayin kita. Re-rapein kita. So, it will constitute a crime. Kasi crime yung homicide or murder. When you kill someone. Rape. When you wanna rape someone, di ba? So the offender may or may not attain his purpose. So pwede ma-attain niya, pwede hindi. But in grave threats, the threats will always and always amount or always constitute a crime. Remember that. On the other hand, in the case of light threats, um, the threat will not constitute a crime, but it is always subject to a demand of money or the imposition of any other condition. Note that in grave threats, pwede rin siya mag-demand ng money, pero nga, magka-constitute a crime yung threat niya. So light threats naman, uh, the wrong does not constitute a crime. So, yung threat niya dito, hindi naman magiging, um, hindi naman magiging crime. So, here, the offender has attained his purpose or pwede rin niyang hindi ma-attain yung purpose. And, however, it is always subject to a demand of money or position of any other condition, even though not unlawful. Lastly, in case of other light threats, other light threats can be done by threatening another with a weapon or by drawing such weapon in a quarrel unless it be uh, in lawful self-defense or it can be done by orally threatening another with the harm amounting to a crime in the heat of anger. So pag galit na galit na galit, na galit ka lang, sayo, mapapatay kita kasi sobrang galit ka na huli mo nag-cheat yung jowa mo. Ano, other light threats kasi in the, it is stated that it is in the heat of an anger. And we also discussed before, I think it was in... Um, discharge of firearms, na pag pinook lang, di ba, I said that in the other video, pag pinook lang yung gun sa'yo, it's other light threats, di ba? So, anyway, um, here, he did not pursue with the idea involved in the threats, other light threats, 
and the last one is orally threatening another, which does not constitute a crime. So whether it be grave, less, uh, less grave, like, grave threats, light threats, or other la light threats, the essence of threats is yung intimidation. It is a promise of a future wrong, a promise of a future harm, not now, but in the future. So since it is a promise of a future wrong, threats may be committed either personally or orally, or it can be committed in writing or through an inter intermediary. If threats are committed through writing, uh, the penalty is qualified. So, pwedeng sa messenger or sumulat ka talaga sa kanya. So, ito yung mga um, kailangan natin tumaan. Sa grave threats, constitute to crime. Sa light threats, it doesn't constitute to crime. Sa other light threats, in the heat of the anger, may weapon. Ayun. So, under Article 284, we have bond of good behavior. So, bond for good behavior is a bail which is required by the court to be posted by any accused only in the crimes of grave threats and other light and other light threats. In the crimes of grave threats and other light threats, the court would allow or would require the accused to file or to post a bond for good behavior in order to ensure that he will not make good the said the said threat. So, para hindi talaga niya gawin. If the said accused failed to pay or post the, post the said bond for good behavior, then the penalty that would be imposed is this chero in order to ensure that he will not make good the said threat. So we have an example here. What if A saw B uh, and C B my new car? It was a limited edition Porsche sports car. Wow. A knew that it was smuggled. So ito yung mga daling ng car. And so he threatened B to give him 700,000 pesos or else he will call the Bureau of Customs and report that the car is smuggled. So what crime is committed? So the crime committed here is light threats. Since what was threatened does not constitute a crime. Because hindi naman crime na isumbong siya sa Bureau of Customs. It's actually um it's actually not true kasi mali naman talaga yung ginawa nitong si B. Um so it is not unlawful to report a smuggled car to a Bureau of Customs, even when subject to a demand of money uh, and the imposition of any other condition, even though not unlawful. So, kasabi nga natin kanina, isa to sa elements ng light threats. Hindi naman din siya magpa-constitute sa crime. So, another example is, what if X is indebted to Y? And so, Y visited X to ask for the payment. X got furious and said to Y, get the hell out of my house. If you are still here when I come back, I swear I'll kill you. So what crime is committed here? So the crime committed is grave threats because there is a promise of future wrong to be committed if Y is still there in the house when X um when X comes back. So the co constitutes a crime being her murder or homicide, as the case may be. So we go now to Articles 26, 286 rather, and 287, Grave Coercion and Light Coercion or Unjust Vexation. The penalties here are Arresto Mayor and Arresto Menor. So these are the elements. So the elements for Grave Coercion is that any person is prevented by another from doing something not prohibited by law or compelled to do something against his or her will, will be it right or wrong. So another is that the prevention or compulsion is affected by violence, either by material force or such a display of it as would produce intimidation and consequent control over the will of the offended party. And that the person who restrains the will and liberty of another has no right to do so. In other words, that the restraint is not made under authority of law, of a law, or in the exercise of any lawful right. So there are two ways in committing grave coercion. So there's preventive coercion and there's compulsive coercion. So preventive coercion is when a, pre when a person prevents another by means of violence, threat, or intimidation from doing something not prohibited by law. So kung, kung wari, si A and si B, tapos nakita, si A and si B nag-aaway, tapos sasaksakin na ni, sasaksik, sasaksakin na ni B si A, pinirvent siya ni X, sinapak ni X si B. So is it grave, grave coercion by ginawa ni X kay B? No, because um, X is doing something to prevent B from doing something unlawful. Sa grave coercion, kailangan lawful naman yung ginagawa, pero prende prevent niya. So another is compulsive coercion. If a person compels another by means of violence, threat, or intimidation to do something against his will, whether it be right or wrong, whether it be prohibited or not by law, so to amount to preventive coercion, um, 
the offender the offender by means of violence prevents someone from doing something which is not prohibited by law like what I said a while ago sa so, compulsive coercion naman various threat or intimidation parang tinatakot niya yung tao para hindi gumawa ng isang bagay na hindi rin naman unlawful so how would you distinguish threat versus coercion so sa threat Kanina, di ba, we were talking about rape, light, and um, other light threats. So, so threat, the, the wrong intended to be committed is in the future. Sa coercion naman, the wrong in threatened to be committed is direct, personal, immediate, and imminent. So, right now. Yung pananakot na ginagawa niya, right now. So, sa threat, um, di ba, sinabi kanina, it can be committed orally or in writing or through internet chatting even. But in coercion, you cannot coerce someone uh, in writing or through internet chatting. So you have to remember that. Okay, sorry. We go now to other uh, to light coercion or unjust vexation. So it is committed by a creditor who shall seize anything belong to his debtor by means of violence or intimidation in order to apply the same to the indebtedness. So, there is one form of light coercion under Article 287, that is unjust vexation. It is a form of light coercion. So, it refers to any um, human conduct which, although not capable of producing any material harm or injury, annoys, vexes, or irritates an innocent person. So, an example sa, ano, an example din sa book said na may naglalakad, tapos biglang pinalo na ang lead pipe. Ganon. Tapos yung isang case, um, this is a very uh, famous case, is yung USD medical student that at first um, it was attempted rape. Then the court, the Supreme Court ruled that it was only unjust vexation. Kasi I think the boy here went inside of the went inside of the window of the condo of the girl and he covered the girl with a cloth na parang pampa pang or something, but it didn't work and the girl was able to escape. So it says here na unjust fixation lang daw yun, nangaanoy lang daw yung lalaki, nakakaloka. Diba? Pero honestly, whatever. Pero, di ba, pero kung natuloy yun, kung nahimatay si girl, eh, rape na siya. But it says there that the charge was, um the charge was attempted rape, but it said nga na unjust fixation daw, nangiinis lang daw yung lalaki. So Supreme Court said na it is a human conduct which annoys or vexes the said female medical student. So we go now to um, before we go here, we go to other similar coercions under Article 288 or compulsory purchase of merchandise and payment of wages by means of tokens. So other like coercion is committed by forcing or compelling directly or indirectly or knowingly permitting any employee or laborer to buy merchandise or commodities from the said employer. So pinipilit mo yung employee mo na bumili sa'yo. And lastly, by paying the wages due to the labor or employees by any tokens or object other than the legal tender currency of the Philippines, unless it be requested by the said employee. Under the labor code, it says na yung payment ng wages, um, it should be in the, in the amount of money. So, unless mapag-usapan nyo, pero it is, um, it is not it is not encouraged that you pay in tokens. So, it can be penalized under um, Article 288. If that employer does it in um, uh, does it in the form na kinohorse kanya. So we go now to Chapter Three: Discovery of this is the last one: Discovery and Revelation of Secrets. So here it's Articles 290 to 292: Discovering Secrets through Seizure of Correspondence, Revealing Secrets with Abuse of Confidence, Abuse of Office, Revelation of Industrial Secrets. So fast lang siya. Discovery and revelation of secrets and their elements. So under Article 290, um, we have that the offender is a private individual or... Explain ko na. So here, we have a seizure of correspondence in order to discover the secrets of another. This is committed by any person who shall seize any correspondence of another in order to discover the secret of any person. So in case of seizure of correspondence in order to discover the secrets of another, Damage is not an element. Likewise, revelation is not an element. So here, the offender is a private individual or a public officer, not in the exercise of his official function. So he seizes papers of, or letters of another that the purpose is to discover the secrets of such another person. That offender is informed of the contents of the paper or letter seized. So, so another is Article 291. 
is re revealing the revealing the secrets with the abuse of office. This is committed by a manager or by an employee or by a servant who reveals the secrets of his principal or master learned by him in such capacity. It is the revelation of secrets which will consummate the crime, not merely discovery, di ba kanina, damage and revelation, hindi siya element. Here in Article 2, uh, 291, it is the revelation of the secrets which, which will consummate the crime, not merely discovery, but revelation of the said secrets. Again, damage is not an element. It is not necessary that the offended party be prejudiced or damaged. So here the elements are that the offender is a manager, employee, or servant, that he learns the secrets of his principal or master in such capacity, that he reveals such secrets. So nakakaloka naman yung employee na yan, di ba? And lastly is Article 290, Revelation of Industrial Secrets. So this is committed by an, any person who, um, any person in charge, employee, or workman of a manufacturing or industrial establishment who shall learn and discover the secrets of his industry and shall re reveal the same to the prejudice of the owner thereof. In case of revelation of industrial secrets, mere revelation of those secrets will not suffice. The, there must be damage or prejudice caused to the offended party. The law requires the prejudice, the prejudice of the owner thereof. So these are the elements of the crime. Like, for example, um, my ketchup factory. Tapos, isa kasi supervisors or sa mataas yung position doon, yung sa senior chemist. Tapos, nireveal mo yung secret formula dun sa kalaban na company ng ketchup. So, I think this falls under Article 290. And damage here and prejudice caused the offended party is an element. So, this ends our discussion in Title 9. Thank you for listening and I hope this helps your review for Criminal Law 2. And sorry kung yung iba nakakalito or may mali ako na mga nasabi. I'm no expert just yet. Thank you for listening and I hope um, you tune in to my next videos.